What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my 2018 tips and app recommendations. So it's going to be a list of my a couple of my favorite features for Android, um, or basically just tips, and then from there I'm going to jump right into the app recommendations for the year. So they're apps that I use rec regularly, like them, can have continued to use them throughout the year. And then I'm going to throw in a couple of runner-ups for just apps that I use um, not as regularly, but like to use, and apps that I've just... Uh, a couple of apps that I've just started using recently and um, have been getting used to, but I, because I can't consistently say that I like it or that it's available for everyone, I'll mention them and get my thoughts as something that is interest that are interesting features for me. So to jump or to start it off, my first biggest tip that I was that I've been sharing lately is that um, being able to easily access your battery settings and stats in Android. So what you're going to do, and this is, I think this is pretty standard for most recent versions of Android, um, but there's a couple of ways to get to it. So the first way is to swipe down in your notification settings and long press on the battery icon, which will tell you your battery percentage and how long your battery is expected to app, or sorry, uh, how long your battery is expected to last. Um, if this part is going to look a little bit different in different versions of Android. If you're on Android 9, you're going to see, see it look like this. If you're on um, prior versions, you're going to see um, the number of hours that your battery is expected to last. Um, from here, the thing to look at is how your um, apps are using your battery. In Android 9, it's going to give you the top apps that are... Um, draining your battery and help you decide if you want to stop them or clear them, uninstall them or whatever, things like that. With prior versions of Android, it gives you that listing directly so you see the top apps that are using battery lately. Um, from here, if you want, you can always turn on battery saver or have the automatic battery saver turned on at, for example, 5, 10, or 15%. So if you real, if you think or decide that you want that to always happen, then that is always an option. But this is pretty much a good um, stat to have just because, um, or a good thing to know about just because it's always good to know that how long your battery is expected to last and if apps are behaving unusually then you know that you're able to stop them so the other thing to look or other way to get there is as you can see so you go into settings and hit battery and it will get you to the same thing so that's my one functionality tip for um android on the more social fun side um whether it's something that you know about in um, have wanted a slightly easier way of doing it or you don't really remember or don't really know about this and that is the ability to take a screenshot on Android. So for me the um, way I always do it is use the volume down button and the power button because that way no matter what screen, on, screen I'm on I can easily take a screenshot without having to swipe down on my notification drawer. So when you take that screenshot your screen will flash showing that I took the picture and when you swipe down your notification drawer, you'll see that you have the screenshot um, saved. You can also go into your gallery and see that as well. So you can see where your picture is saved, see your screen resolution, and all of the file size and all of that good stuff. And that way you can, from here, you can share it or um, to social media or um, do it or share it with directly via um, SMS, text, whatever. And a little bit of a fun, or to take it at one step further on the fun side, if you install an app called Screener, what you can do is you can add a, the frame of your phone to the image to make it stand out and make it look that much more, a little bit better, give it a little bit more of that promo, promos um, look and feel. And as you can see, there's a good number of phones available. And so if you don't see, so if you find your phone, then perfect, you get a uh, look that matches your phone. If you don't find your phone, there's a couple of different options, notably the no device frame and the no device frame 18 by 9, depending on the size of your phone. So you can give it a generic look. Um, so since I have a OnePlus 3T and the size is the same as a OnePlus 3, I, I'll, I use that frame and I can load the image directly into that frame. And what the app will do is it'll stick it directly into the um, phone's um, shape and it'll colorize the background to to match the UI of that, or to match the color scheme of the um, image you're loading. From here, the other feature that I like is the ability to, uh, you can manually change the color of the background if it was well, if you prefer something else. Or if you want a transparent background, you can do that as well. 
or you can pick another image from your gallery as a background and you can um, uh, make your phone stand out like that as well and then from here let's say you're all done and you want to share it you can directly hit the share menu or you can hit save and it'll save it to your device um, so from here this takes me directly into my first um, um, app recommendation and that is an app called Snapseed. So what Snapseed allows you to do is edit your picture on the go. So um, it has a good number of um, photo editing tools. So as you can see here, you can do things like black and white. You can apply um, HDR mode or HDR styling so it enhances the color. And you have a couple of different options and um, sliding your finger will allow you to um, adjust the filters. Um, and that goes for most of them. So after it applies it, you can adjust the setting. You can uh, go up and down to adjust uh, the different um, um, effects and things like that. From here, you can also do basic things like cropping your um, image. So let's say you um, want to uh, cut out some of the extraneous stuff from the background. You can do that or you can use one of the other presets and uh, go from there. Once you're done with any of the changes, if you hit the checkbox, it will crop it out and you'll be all set. Once you're done, you can um, either say, share the image from here via tech, the usual sharing features, or you can save it to your device if you're gonna use it for later. Um, so that's really a, um, a basic overview of Snapseed. It does allow you to do a lot of different things. There are apps that give you more or less features like Adobe's Lightroom and things like that if you're more into uh, more photography tips and tools on the go. But with Snapseed, it gives you a good number of uh, functions and filters without having to think too much about it and uh, give you those editing tools um, on the go so you're not spending too much time or more time than you want to spend on it. So from here, the biggest tool that I I recommend for people, especially if you have a Google account, is to use an app called Google Photos. So what this does is it allows you to back up your pictures that you take um, through, on your phone and back them up to your Google account so you can um, visit, view them on your Android device. If you have a tablet, then you can um, view them there and or if you want to view them on a, in a web browser you can do that as well all by logging directly into your account and the beauty here is that I believe or I believe it's cross-platform so it works on iOS as well but the beauty of this is that let's say you're um, you've been backing up all your photos to Google Photos then when you get a new Android device whether because you broke it, it's um, out of date, you're upgrading, whatever, then when you log into that same account, you'll be able to get access to the same pictures. So that way, um, you don't have to worry about losing them. They're all backed up and um, you 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 can save them again if you want, but that's kind of time consuming, but they're all backed up to your Google account. So that way you don't have to worry about um, whether you're going to lose them or not. They're backed up. So they're available as long as your account is active. And the other tip I recommend for Google Photos is the backup option set to Wi-Fi. So for me, I'm on a limited data plan, so I don't want to eat up my data just with Google backing up my pictures all the time. So I have it set to upload on Wi-Fi. You can turn it off if you want, especially if you have an unlimited data plan. But if you have it set to me like for like me what to, to upload update only on Wi-Fi, then it'll tell you how many images it has left to upload and you know that it's kept picking up all of your images. So that's all there is for that. So the next app review that I recommend is uh, is more of a launcher app, and that's an app or it's a launcher called Nova Launcher. So what Nova Launcher does is it enhances your um, home screen's customization options beyond what would normally come with your phone. So when you have set it to your home screen and you go to settings, you'll see a number of um, settings. So you can do things like set your desktop grid. So I have it set to five by six icons rather than the default four by four. You can set your icon layout so you can have bigger or smaller icons. If you want to turn your labels on and off, you can do that. You can change the text color. Um, you can adjust the padding or um, how whether or not you have a dock so that way you can and even how many icons you show on your dock so that way you can adjust how your home screen looks um, based on your personal preference you can even set the google search bar to be in your dock above or below your icons and 
adjust those based on um, different widgets and stuff you may have installed. So for example, you can have the default search box, but let's say instead of the um, search box, I want to have, um, let's say I want to have just a row of toggles, then um, I can do that. Or let's say I want to have my weather forecast in the dock, then I can do that and it'll show up just like that. So Nova Launcher is full of um, all sorts of settings like that. And then you can even go into your app drawer and you can have a vertical or horizontal app drawer. Um, app drawer. You can set the background transparency if you want. So you can see your wallpaper when you're in your um Homes on your homes, or when you're on your app door, you can see your wallpaper. You can set frequently used apps. Um, you can set an automatic night mode, so if you're, so it'll detect when it's nighttime and adjust the colors. Then you have um, gesture options. Options, so when you swipe down with one finger, you can expand your notifications. But if you want to swipe twice, then it'll open your app drawer, swipe up options, pinch in, pinch out, all sorts of things like that to help you customize your home screen. And there are other app launchers that are good as well. My other, my runner up is um, Action Launcher. Um, I used to actually recommend that as my primary, but um, for me, I've found that it's gotten a little heavier than Nova Launcher. So um, it's, at times it does feel sluggish, but there are regular app updates to make sure it is very. Uh, to stay up to date, it incorporates the latest features like automatic theming and things like that. So it kind of takes out the thought process of um, uh, making your home screen look uniform. And the biggest other thing for um, setting up your home screen is the ability to install um, icon packs. So you can use what's already built in, whether you want the default round, squircle, square, or things like that. Or if you go into um, Google Play and search for icon packs, you can install your own icons. or not, Well, not your own, but you can install icons uh, packs that are available so you can make it look um, cartoonish, um, have a little bit of depth and a 3D effect and things like that. So there's all sorts of different options like that available. So with that being said, as far as uh, reading and news and catching up on the latest information, I have two app recommendations. The first is going to be Google News because it curates your um, um, the news based on your location and your topics of interest. So when you first load the app, you'll see a layout like this. It does offer um, a light and dark theme so you can set it to always automatic battery saver or never i just keep it on dark mode because that's a preference for me um and it'll give you the latest news for that are based on my likes and preferences of what i like to see when you go into headlines you can see the latest news and then you can switch between your home country whether it's us or then, then go into world business technology and see all sorts of different news like that and you can always swipe uh, left and right as well and then you can go into favorites if you have favorite topics and things like that so it's a very nifty way of getting the news from around the world in various categories um, and just read and open up the um, those articles from there now let's say you want to have a more personalized um, experience and you want to customize your own um, news stories. I recommend an app called Feedly. It's been around for a while. Um, I think since even before the time of Google News, but maybe at least since then. And what it allows you to do is subscribe to your own news sources and create your own categories. So for example, for me, I have it set to entertainment and uh, news and then I have Patel and Zero One just for my comics and Google blogs and things like that. And then Star Wars news. So as you can see at the moment, it's, this is all the news that I have going on. But if you click, I can also click on the different folders and view just the news in those categories. Um, if I want to add a story, I can either add a custom RSS by copying that RSS feed and pasting it here. Or I can, when I... Um, you're searching for news. Let's say you want to. I want to do a search for. Um, I don't know. Let's say Transformers. Transformers. Then when I do search, um, it'll. Or I guess I have to do a power search, but um, which is something new, I guess. But you can do a search for news and um, add it that way, or add the custom RSS feed and add those feeds to your search that way. 
And then you can also do things like save for later. So you can see if you, as you save articles, then you can, um, add them to your, um, um, if when you can add them to your reading list for later. Now, let's say you want to do a search, uh, do a search for, um, text sources and you want to add sources that way. You can do that as well from here, or you can, um, let's say go back and let's say you want to do by various different categories and see different sources, then you can do that as well. So that way you get all sorts of, you get the sources that you like and you get that more personalized look and feelings. And you can of course categorize it according to how you want to look at the news. So those are the two um, news and app features that I recommend. So with that, I'm going to jump into my music recommendations. So for the music side of things, um, there's always Pandora, Spotify, and all of those kinds of streaming apps. But for me, I always go back to Google Play Music because it allows you to not only um, listen to various stations and have streaming audios based on different categories and decades and activities and things like that, but you can also buy and manage your own music collection from here. So... I have my own um, music library, so I've purchased um, different music o over the years. And um, since I've been using Google Play Music, I've purchased through there, and it works on Android and iOS, so it's cross-platform compatible. But you can also use Google's Upload Your Music um, selection to upload up to, I think, 20,000 songs. So um, if you have a CD collection and you want some of those tracks on your in your Google Play library, then that is also an option to have. And if you're getting into podcasting, um, Google Play Music also offers a podcast selection, which is going to jump me into my next app recommendation. But if you want to listen to some podcasts and you want an all-in-one app to do that, then Google has that you covered there. The main limitation here is that let's say there's a podcast that it's not available in your um, pot in the Google Play directory, or you want to add a custom RSS because you're a supporter of a podcast on Patreon, then I would recommend an app called Pocket Casts. So what this allows you to do is um, not only manage the podcast that you'd like to listen to, like these are the ones I have right now, but let's say you want to add a podcast via RSS or um, um, through their directory, then you can use a discover tab to look for new podcasts that are available, uh, look at featured and trending top podcasts. But if you hit the search button, you can paste a RSS feed to subscribe to your own podcast that or to any podcast that may not be available. So that way you can listen to whatever you want. Um, so from here, um, some of the features that pocket casts offer that, um, Google Play Music doesn't is the ability to, uh, for example, set uh, vo uh, playback options. So you can, I think, well, actually, you might offer playback speed, but you can do things like trim silence, boost the volume, so it normalizes the volume across all your podcasts, and you can select where it applies to. So if you want to apply to just one or all, you can do that. You can also create a playlist of up next to listen to, so that way, when as you're listening, it'll continue to. Um, play the audio. Um, you can have it do it automatically. So let's say I go into my Android Central podcast. You can do the auto add to automatically add um, a new episodes to the queue. So that way, as you're listening, it'll continue to play um, those new episodes. And then you can add more filters. So if you want to separate by audio and video podcasts, then or um, new and playing and in progress and things like that, you can do that. And speaking of that note, um, Pocket Cast does allow playing video podcasts where I, I don't think Google Play Music does that, um, on that note. Um, in the settings menu, you can adjust things like how fast forward and how uh, far to skip back. You can have a play over notifications, whether to stream or not stream. You can set auto download options. So just like the pictures uploading only on Wi-Fi, I have my podcast download only on Wi-Fi. Um, you can set the appearance to uh, dark or light theme. You can show the artwork if you want. Um, you can set your sync settings. And the beauty here is that if you create an account, a free account with Pocket Cast, it has cross-platform sync compatibility. So if you use Pocket Cast on an Android smartphone or a, let's say an, an, an iPad, you can install the app on both devices and then sign in with the same account so your podcasts always stay in sync. 
Um, and then you can, uh, as a bit of a fun thing that the developers do, you can listen to your or check out your Pocket Cast uh, stats. So I listened to for 151 days and 10 hours, and you can see the various stats for what I do, and I can share that if I so want. But as far as pocket, um, podcasts, it's a good way to get into talk shows and drama and comedy, and there's all sorts of various categories to listen to. So if you want to listen to the radio, um, if you want to get into the podcast phenomenon, so to speak, and you want to create your own um, radio network of sorts, it's a very easy way to go. The app does cost some money. I think it's around three ninety nine or four ninety nine per platform. So it is a, not necessarily on the cheap side, but not necessarily on the expensive side. But it is worth of an investment with all of the different features that they give you. So that's really all there is for that. So um, that kind of covers the apps and stuff that I regularly use and like. One of the runner-up apps that I or runner-up features that I wanted to give was the picture-in-picture mode, which I believe was in, started in Android 8 and going forward. So this doesn't really work for if you have a device running any prior version of Android, but is an app that I or a feature that I like because it works in most apps like YouTube, YouTube TV, Netflix. Um, I'm not sure what else, but the problem I have, and the reason I don't recommend it too much, is that it does not work with Amazon Prime Video because I don't think Amazon has enabled it in their app. But um, that is kind of a setback as far as not being able to use a pretty cool feature and be able to, for example, watch a TV show or something while I'm reading, or if I need to, um, if I'm talking to someone and I want to keep the show or movie going, then if I'm watching something on Amazon Prime, I'm unable to continue to do so, like with YouTube or even Google Play Movies, which is the other app that supports picture in picture. So hopefully they implement it, but, um, it's something that I kind of, um, wish was implemented. And then the other app that um, I want to recommend is Android Auto. So it is a good um, feature to or a good app to use if you have a stand in your car for di- directions and music and that sort of stuff to control your device without having to actually touch it. Um, and then if you have an Android Auto heads up display in your um, device, in your car, then it syncs nicely with that just by plugging it in and being able to access your music, your podcast, um, your, and then getting a- quick access to directions and weather and things like that. So, um, because it is something that I just started using, that's the only reason I'm not recommending it. I'm still getting used to it, getting used to its tips and tricks. But so far, it is pretty nifty. I do like the ease of use, the being able to not have to, or with a full um, Google Assistant integration, being able to easily get to um, um, navigation so I can check on traffic and things like that. So just... It's one of those things that's a definite plus, and you can always use it by installing it on any Android device, and you can play around with it. If you have a um, car mount, then you can still use it and uh, play around with it if you like. But that is all for this particular review for what I like for 2018, and then hopefully we see some new fun and interesting apps and games to play throughout next year as well. But that's all there is for this particular um review and overview hopefully you guys found it interesting liked it and all of that good stuff so for the youtube users in the show notes for the video i'll have a link to all of the apps that i'm recommending with the link so you can get access quick access to those for the audio users i'll have a link in on the website post as well with a link to the youtube video so if you want to um uh, take a look at or watch the video and see the video walkthrough, then that will also be available for you to take a look at. But that's all there is for this review. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com. And of course, if you want to uh, give back, there's a tip jar on the YouTube channel, or you can um, send a couple bucks or whatever you th- whatever value you found this to be at paypal.me slash Patel N01. But that's all there is for this review. Thanks for watching and listening. And until next time.